Okay, so for this video tutorial, I want to show you a really, really simple technique for how we can realistically add tattoos onto our subjects. Now, to do so, makes use of something called displacement maps within Photoshop, which at first could maybe sound a little bit tricky, but believe me, they're really, really simple. So, let's get cracking. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create our displacement map, and that's basically just a black and white version, albeit a bit more contrasty, of our original picture. So to do that, first of all, I'm going to create a duplicate of our original, and to do that, I'm going to go to the image menu and just simply use uh, duplicate, and it'll ask me for a name, and I'm just going to call that displacement map, and click OK. So now in front of us, we're actually working on a duplicate copy of our original picture. So like I said, we need to turn that into black and white and keeping things nice and simple, I'm going to go to the image menu at the top of our screen, choose adjustments and desaturate. And to make it just a little bit more contrasty, again I'm going to go to the image menu at the top of the screen, adjustments, and then we'll just choose something like levels. And all I'm going to do then is just bring over the shadow slider and the midtones and we'll just enhance the highlights just a little bit as well. And click OK. The next thing I like to do is to really make the highlight, shadow, and midtone areas just pop that little bit more. It just helps, I find, with the displacement map later on when we're doing putting the tattoo onto our uh, onto our subject. So to do that, all I want to uh, do next is create a blank layer above, and I'm going to fill that with 50% grey. To do that, I go to the Edit menu at the top of the screen and choose Fill, and we have this dialog box here, and one of the options is 50% grey, and we just click OK. Over in the Layers panel now, we change the blend mode of that grey layer to soft light, which then allows me to see our picture beneath. Now, using the dodging and burn tools, I'm going to bring out the details in this picture where the highlights and shadows and midtones all meet together to create the contour that you can see in Steve's figure. So, over in our toolbar, we're going to first of all select the Dodge tool. And keeping the settings nice and simple, I'm going to choose the range set to midtones and exposure of 20%. And then all I want to do then is just go over where the highlight areas are with the dodge tool and paint over with them with the dodge tool to bring them out and make them that much more pronounced. So we've got this area here in Steve's shoulder where they've got little separation in his shoulder. We've got the light down the back of his arm, like so, because this is where generally I'm going to be putting the tattoo. So we'll bring that detail out there. We've also got this area on his obliques here, so if I wanted to at a later stage put a tattoo across here, enhancing these highlight areas would really make the tattoo follow the shape of Steve's muscles much more realistically. So I'll just bring, uh, bring the detail out in these by painting over them with the dodge tool like so. We've got some more detail we need to bring out on his abdominals. A little bit there, and obviously I'm doing this quite quickly just to sort of demonstrate the technique, so when you're doing this you do things a lot slower. But we're just going to paint over those areas there, like so. This area on his neck is quite important as well because it's really quite prominent. So I want to make sure that the tattoo, if it comes that far up, really follows that so we can really see the shape uh, of Steve's neck in the tattoo as well, like so. And that's probably enough on the highlights. So the next stage is to bring out the mid-tones and shadow areas. So again, back over to our toolbar, but this time we're choosing the burn tool. The settings will keep the same as the dodge tool with the range set to midtones and an exposure of 20%. And then all I'm going to do is darken down the areas where we did in between uh, where we did the highlights. So using my right bracket key to make the brush just a little bit bigger, left one makes it smaller. I'm going to paint over these areas here with the burn tool to make these much more prominent, these areas in between the highlights. You'll see why this is so important when we actually do apply our tattoo because it allows, like I said before, the tattoo to really follow the line of uh, the sort of person that you're putting on their shape and the contour and their physique. So that's the obliques, they look fine. We've got this area here, these veins when we're photographing Steve, our model, first of all, they're really quite prominent, so I'm gonna darken those down so that if the tattoo comes over there, they'll also follow the line and look more realistic the way they go over the, the veins. Bring the detail down there, bright, darken them up, or darken them down even like so. This area of Steve's shoulder was really quite prominent, so I want to make sure the tattoo follows that. So I'm just going to darken down, add a bit more sort of a shadow into there, like that. And then also, 
this top area of the shoulder where it sort of curves over. Let's make sure that the tattoo follows that. And just a little bit more. Okay, there's no science to this really. It's just a case of bringing out what is already there so that the separation is much more obvious. Last bit we'll do, maybe we could uh, darken down the center of his chest. Okay, making the brush a little bit smaller now using the left bracket key. And we'll just darken down a bit of a line down the center of his chest like so. So if we zoom out, we can see that obviously we've gone way overboard with the dodging and burning, but we need to do that to make the final effect look realistic. So there we go. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to the uh, layers panel and using the menu there, we're going to flatten that image. Now, one thing we want to do is to make sure that we don't bring any over any of the texture from Steve's skin because that will show through when we eventually put the tattoo onto him. So we need to sort of smooth that out. But what we don't do is blur it because if we blur it, we're going to flatten out the work we've just done. So we can use the despeckle tool just to remove some of the texture on Steve's skin. And we find that in the filter menu where it says noise and we've got despeckle. Now when we first click that, you maybe won't see much of an effect. So we need to just apply that filter just a few more times so that we're sure we've got rid of that texture, but we've managed to keep the detail in the, in the highlight mid-tone areas that we've just done with the dodging and burning. So to apply that filter again, all we need to do is hold down our command or control key and press the F button on your keyboard just a few more times. And I'll probably do it, say, three times. So I'm holding down my control key, press F once, again, and again. And that should be enough now to remove that roughness of Steve's skin. Final stage is to save this displacement map for use later on. So I'll go to the file menu and we'll choose save as. Now obviously we called it the duplicate displacement map and we can see at the top here where it says save as, it's called it displacement map. But I want to uh, save this as a Photoshop document. So I'm going to click on Photoshop. So it makes sure it says PSD at the end there. And I'll just put this on the desktop for use later on. And click save. And then we will close it. So, we've now made our displacement map. The next stage is actually putting the tattoo onto Steve's shoulder and bicep area. So the next stage is actually adding in our tattoo. And I'm gonna bring in uh, a tattoo drawing that I've got, and I'm gonna bring it in as a smart object. So to do that, I'm going to the file menu, choosing place. I'm gonna locate the tattoo I want, and I'm gonna go for tattoo number four and clicking place, so it brings it in as a smart object. Obviously it's way too big at the moment, but we can resize that. But one of the things as well you'll notice is it's a black tattoo on a white background. Now luckily using blend modes, we can get rid of that white straight away in one click. And all we need to do is change the blend mode of this tattoo layer to multiply. And straight away you'll see the white goes. So now we've got more of an idea of where it's being placed, so we can position it exactly how we want it. Incidentally, if you want to know more about the multiply blend mode and the screen blend mode and what they can do, I've actually got a video recorded on my YouTube page. So head on over to the YouTube page and the actual uh, tutorial video is called Using Blend Modes. And that explains about what you can do with multiply and screen. Anyway, heading back over to the tutorial here. Let's now resize the tattoo. So I'm gonna to go to edit and free transform. And I'm just going to use these drag handles to reduce the size of the tattoo to around about there. And when we click out, so, or move our cursor outside of these uh, bounding box, it allows us to rotate as well. So I'm going to sort of bring it across to there, drag it over to, onto his bicep and shoulder area, and just position it now where I want it to be. And I reckon around about there is just right. So we'll click enter to commit that. Now obviously zooming in here we can see that the tattoo is in the right area but we've got these areas here which extend over and off Steve's body but we can deal with those at the end. Now this is where our displacement map comes in. We're now going to apply the displacement map to allow the tattoo to follow the shape and contour of Steve's body and we do that by going to the filter menu at the top of the screen, choosing distort and then the second option down is displace. Now when you do that, you'll get this dialog box come up here with a horizontal scale and a vertical scale. Now I like to start off with these numbers quite low, so we'll start off with say five in each of those. And all that's doing is controlling how much distortion we want in that tattoo when it's following the displacement map. And you'll see what I mean in a short while. But we'll click OK. And when we do that, it brings up a box here asking us to 
a basically load in our displacement map and I know that was on our desktop and there it is so I'll click OK on the displacement map and you'll see once Photoshop's done its thing it's actually started to sort of manipulate the tattoo now so it follows the contours of Steve now if I go before and after we can see that it's actually following the shape of Steve's muscles quite well if you zoom in here we can see this area here on the shoulder that was cut see how the tattoo sort of arcs over onto there that works quite nicely. In fact, you know what? I think we might need it just a little bit more distorted. And this is the advantage of actually bringing in the tattoo as a smart object. So what I need to do now is double click on the filter. It brings back up the dialog box. I'm gonna change those to eight, just to add a little bit more of a distortion. Click OK. Again, it's gonna ask me for my displacement map. So I'll click on the displacement map, which is on our desktop, and click Open. Photoshop does its thing. And now we can see just a little bit more distortion applied if we go before and after. And I really like that. And we can see the effect even more because obviously I'm not going to leave the tattoo looking that dark. I think if we lower the opacity of that layer or opacity uh, down to around about 60% and zoom out, we can see that it's a bit more realistic because we're getting some of the texture of Steve's skin uh, coming through as well. So yeah, I quite like that. Now we can get rid of these areas here that have extended over onto the background by just adding a white layer mask to the tattoo layer, pressing B on our keyboard to get the brush, and just making sure that we're painting in black, and we can tell that by our foreground color here being in black. And then all we need to do is just paint over the areas that extend off Steve onto the background like so. Now just taking care not to paint off too much. So we just reduce the size of our brush using the left bracket key, and just come in nice and close and just paint it away so that it looks like it's naturally going over the curve of his body out of sight there. So we can get rid of all this. And a little bit more on this area here. Carefully painting that away, like so. So there we go, zooming out, we can now see we've realistically added the tattoo onto Steve's bicep and shoulder. And I really like the way that it folds over onto this little cut in his shoulder just here and also on this little area here where there's a little bit of a fold can you see how the tattoo sort of like dives in there and comes back out and slightly distorted really works really really well but it's just one of those things that's trial and error when you check in and put the numbers in obviously first we tried five but eight eight nailed it and was just spot on so there you have it now obviously anybody who has tattoos will will sort of testify that they are a bit addictive so as you can see I've got a few more, obviously painting down here when we did the old obliques, that's helped for these to tie in, and that little bit on the chest, but if we zoom in on that chest, you'll see what I mean now about this area here, where, see how the chest sort of disappears here and the tattoo folds in and then comes back out the other side? Really, really realistic, love it. Okay, so there you have it, that's how to realistically add tattoos onto a subject's skin so that they follow the contour of the body. I'll leave you to it and I'll see you next time.